friends, Dr. Corey Babb here. I wanted to talk with you today about a condition that affects more than 200,000 women in the United States every year, and unfortunately, often goes undiagnosed for months or years at a time. It can cause chronic pelvic pain, infertility, painful intercourse, and a slew of other issues. Are you ready? Let's get to the heart of endometriosis. Now, while many of you have probably heard the term endometriosis, there is often a misconception about what the condition is. By definition, endometriosis is the presence of endometrial tissue or tissue from the endometrium or inner lining of the uterus that is existing outside of the uterine cavity. So it can appear in the abdomen, it can appear, appear in the pelvis, on the small intestine, large intestine, brain, bladder, rectum, pretty much anywhere in the entire body you can have implants of this endometrial tissue. And because it is from the uterus and the tissue is from that inner lining, it is hormonally sensitive. And therefore, as a woman goes through her normal menstrual cycle, that tissue will be affected by those changes in those reproductive hormones. Now this becomes a problem because that tissue, being uterine in origin, will bleed when a woman is on her period. Blood outside of very specific areas in the body is very irritating to the tissue around it, and so it causes pain, and over time will cause scarring in that tissue. Therefore, if you have endometrial implants that are, say, on the intestines, with every cycle that a woman goes through, she'll have pain in that area, and that blood that goes and then coats on the outside of the intestine actually becomes an irritant. And the body's natural response to any type of irritation, especially on a local level, is to form scar tissue around it. Therefore, you can actually have these scar tissue bridges that form in areas that there's not supposed to be scar tissue. In the instance of the intestines, then every time stool moves through them, it pulls or tugs on that scar tissue, which causes pain. If we take this mechanism and extrapolate it further, you can end up with what's called the clinical triad of endometriosis, or dysmenorrhea, which is painful menstruation, dyspareunia, which is painful intercourse, and dyskesia, which is painful bowel movements. Um, now this may be the historical clinical picture that a textbook woman may present with, but unfortunately endometriosis mimics a lot of other symptoms. And so um, you can have women that show up and they say, well, my periods are painful, but they're also a lot heavier and longer. That can represent endometriosis. If you have a woman that shows up and says, every month when I'm on my period, I have rectal bleeding, that can be endometriosis. Or if I vomit blood when I'm on my period, that could be endometriosis. So it's not as cut and dry as just having those three symptoms. What's even more frustrating is that outside of surgical evaluation, where you actually go and see endometriosis implants during surgery, or you have tissue sampling that show endometriosis, there's really not any good lab study or imaging test like an x-ray or ultrasound that can detect endometriosis 100% of the time. So as a condition, it's what is called a clinical diagnosis, or it's based off of clinical symptoms, and then obviously if you go to surgery and you see it, you can confirm it. Now one of the most common questions I get in my endometriosis patients is how does this disease process occur? Or how does this happen? If we look at a couple theories that are out there, um, they can kind of explain the possibilities of how endometriosis occurs, but we don't have a definitive answer for that. One of the most common theories is what's called Samson's theory. And basically what it says is that menstrual blood during your period goes out um, through a retrograde menstruation or goes out the fallopian tubes and spills into the pelvis versus going out of the vagina into the outside world. That endometrial tissue that's in that blood then can coat the lining of the abdomen and potentially grow um, into endometrial uh, implants and therefore lead to endometriosis. The theory is called Salomis metaplasia. And basically in that theory, you have tissue that was supposed to develop embryological as uterine tissue um, that instead of developing into the uterus implants on other uh, cell types so you could have an implant on the bowel or on the sidewall of the abdomen or things along those lines there are other theories as well that um, look at things like stem cell lines or immune responses or hormonal mediation for the development of this ectopic endometrial tissue um, but honestly 
the theories are just that, they're theories. It, it doesn't really matter when it comes to the actual treatment of the condition itself. But in case you wanted to know, why does this happen? Those are kind of the most common thoughts about the disease process itself. One of the biggest questions that women who suffer from endometriosis is what can I do about my condition? Now you have to look at it from two different angles. Number one, are you trying to get pregnant? Or number two, are you just trying to deal with the pain and discomfort that comes um, as part of the disease? If you're trying to get pregnant, study after study has shown that the best way to deal or to improve your fertility is to remove the endometriosis lesions themselves. Now that is a surgical procedure and that involves going in usually with a laparoscope or a robotic uh, machine and actually excising or cutting out a portion of the endometriosis lesion itself, hoping to get good tissue around it. Obviously, if you're just talking about the pelvic wall, that can be done relatively um, uh, quickly without any complication. Now, in ladies who have severe endometriosis where there's lots of scar tissue or if the lesions are on something, say, like the bowel or the ureters or things like that, you're often better going to a specialized surgeon or surgery center that does lots of minimally invasive endometriosis surgery. Um, but overall, surgical excision of the lesions is the best way to treat the disease itself. You can go in and just ablate or burn the lesions with like a laser or with cautery, and that will typically provide good relief um, from symptoms, but you know, the new research is showing that as far as conception goes, really your best bet is excising the lesions. Now, if you're just talking about dealing with the pain or some of the symptoms that go along with endometriosis, there are actually a lot of options. The old reliable therapy or kind of old mainstay has been using some form of hormonal medication to affect the way that those endometriosis lesions receive hormonal implants. Now, birth control pills have kind of been the, the main thing that people think about when they uh, think about this way. And the thought behind that is if you're controlling the menstrual cycle and you're not getting the huge ups and downs that go along um, with a normal cycle, then those endometriosis implants will not be as hormonally affected, they won't bleed, and therefore they won't have the pain associated with the condition itself. There have been a lot of different medications that have replicated this that aren't birth control, um, things like uh, luprolide, which basically kind of shuts down those hormonal influences from your brain. Um, Danazol, which is an old medication that works on uh, similar receptors. And then there's a new medication that's out specifically for endometriosis called Orlisa um, that is indicated for pain with endometriosis. Um, and there's kind of two strengths, one that is um, kind of for moderate pain and then one for severe pain with intercourse. Um, and that's a new drug um, that's been out, that came out in 2018. So you may want to ask your provider about that. Um, there are other medications as well that just affect the symptoms like anti-inflammatories or pain medication. Although nowadays we really do try and stay away from uh, opioid narcotics for the treatment of endometriosis because we found that it doesn't really take care of the issue. It acts more just like a band-aid for those symptoms. Now, if you're the type of patient that wants to avoid uh, conventional pharmacologic therapy or surgery, there are other modalities that can help with your symptoms. Dietary modification um, in the form of, say, uh, autoimmune protocol or anti-inflammatory diet. While there's not a lot of randomized controlled studies out there that demonstrate its efficacy versus other therapies, um, I've had more than one patient come in who say that her symptoms were effectively controlled or, or gone altogether by just changing her diet. And there are certain people that will develop food sensitivities or um, are more inflamed by things like red meat or dairy or whatever it may be that when they cut those out of their diet um, get some good relief or sometimes even complete uh, resolution of their symptoms. Other therapies like yoga, mindfulness training, um, EMDR or eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, um, those are other therapies that can help manage the pain that goes along with endometriosis and so it can help your overall quality of life. Um, exercise has been shown to help improve quality of life too. Um, once again, you're not addressing the, the actual physiologic problem of the endometriosis, um, but if it makes you feel better, that's fine by me. Overall, I wanted to illuminate endometriosis as a condition and show that 
there are lots of things that can be done for women who suffer from this debilitating condition. So if you're a, a woman that is experiencing really painful periods, especially if your periods are painful and getting longer, you have pain with intercourse, you have um, kind of random symptoms that go along when you're on your period, like I talked about before, the rectal bleeding or vomiting blood, it pays to go and see your gynecologist or your um, women's health practitioner to really have this checked out because there are a lot of things that we can do. While endometriosis by itself does not promote any types of cancers or things like that, being in a chronically inflammatory state um, is detrimental for your overall health. So getting that under control can lead not only to better reproductive health, but also to better health overall. Well, that's it for me for this episode. Um, I thank you for joining me and I hope that you will like my channel. You can hit that subscribe button um, or that bell to be notified whenever I put out new videos. Once again, I'm Dr. Corey Babb. Thanks for joining me and I hope to see you next time.